right, so we're gonna make meatloaf. I hope you guys like meatloaf. I grew up eating meatloaf. You know what? I will have some meatloaf. Let's have some meatloaf. Ma! Can we get some meatloaf? It was something that my mom made uh, quite often during the winter season. She really enjoyed it, and so did I. It's actually one of the recipes that my whole family makes, and so I still make it today. Um, I know meatloaf is just meatloaf. How many different ways can you make it? But this is our little spin, our little take on meatloaf, and you got to have some mashed potatoes with it. There's no other way of making or having meatloaf. You have to have mashed potatoes with it. So I hope you enjoy this video of me making this. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, please let me know. The one thing I will say is that, in especially now since I've been working all day, um, I want to make this as quick as possible. So I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way, just like my mom used to make it. <laughs> using McCormick meatloaf seasoning packets. So. Yeah, you can make your own seasoning packet, but I'm just going to use this because it's convenient and it tastes good. I like it. Everyone else likes it. No one will ever know that you're using a packaged seasoning mix. I repeat, no one will ever know. So just keep that in mind. Take cheats where you can, especially if you're tired. We've had a long day, right? All right then, so let's get started. I started off by using a two pound chub of 90% lean ground beef and a pound and a quarter of 80% lean ground beef. Then I added one shredded carrot and one quarter of an onion, also shredded. I prefer shredding my onions to avoid my kids from picking them out. My mom always used to have a pound of Farmer John Classic Sausage Links, so I add them too. And then goes in two eggs, one and a half packages of McCormick seasoning mix, about a half a sleeve of saltine crackers, a generous square of ketchup, or a quarter cup of tomato sauce and then just mix it up really well to combine it all together. Okay, so that looks good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this pan. It's actually a brownie pan. So I don't really use it for brownies because it never really comes out right. So I'm going to use this for my meatloaf instead. But I'm going to line it with some foil. Because just in case any of the liquids fall out of the meat, it doesn't seep out of the pan. I'm going to put it in here. And hopefully it fits in there. I think it will. Let's go ahead and get it out. Yeah, it's going to fit. Let's shape it into a meatloaf. I was tired because I had been working on that cake all day and taking care of the kids and cleaning house. And I wasn't really in the mood to cook, but now that I've started cooking, I actually feel better and more in the mood. It becomes like a glaze on top of this meatloaf. And normally, my mom would take slices of bacon and layer it over the top of her meatloaf. I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to cook my meatloaf like this and get it really nice and brown on top. Kind of like you would barbecue sauce on ribs where the whole top it becomes sizzly and brown. And then I'm going to crumble up some cooked bacon and put it on top instead. I think that it would taste so much better that way. So I'm going to cover it first. Oh, my mom would always put water in there. Just around the edges, she would put some water. And I'm guessing this helps keep...
keep the meatloaf from drying out. And don't want your, you don't want your foil sitting directly on top of your meatloaf. You want it to kind of like bubble over it so that the steam can escape a little like that. So I'm just going to wait for my my oven to preheat and then I'm going to stick this in there and I'm probably going to let it cook for about an hour and then I'm going to take the foil off and then put it in there for another 30 minutes and then I might broil it depending on how it looks and then we'll go from there. So stay tuned. Okay, so now I'm going to make some bacon. I have 10 more minutes or so on my timer before I take the foil off. So I'm going to be making potatoes soon. So now I'm going to use the time. I'm having a hard time. I'm going to use this time to make bacon. And then what I do is I like to cut them into lardones. That's the fancy term for strips. <laughs> We're gonna grab a good old flatware pan here. And, easy, easy, easy. So you throw the bacon in the pan. Don't worry, as it cooks, it starts to separate on its own. It's not gonna stick together. And always do it on low heat because low heat draws out all of the fluids and it keeps it from burning. So don't be tempted to cook it faster. Take it slow. Let the bacon do its thing. That's how you achieve crispy bacon all around. Low and slow. They're starting to separate now. Okay, so while that's doing its thing, I'm about ready to pull my meatloaf out from the oven. That's what it looks like right now. It's obviously not done yet. So we're going to put it back in there without the foil on top. My oven is still pretty preheated, so I'm just going to go ahead and start it all over again but this time i think that i'm gonna raise the temperature to 375 so that it gets brown on top and i'm gonna let that go for about 30 minutes okay so i'm gonna go ahead and let that bacon continue to do its thing i'm gonna give it a quick stir real quick but when it starts releasing fat, I like to drain it as it's cooking because it makes the bacon crispier faster. When it's sitting in its own fat, it will stay kind of soft and, and not crispy um, for a lot longer and then it'll burn just out of nowhere. So this is how I do it. I just like to let it do its thing, let it uh, release its juices and pull the juices out as it's cooking. So anyway. We'll get to that. Right now I'm going to start working on my mashed potatoes. And I have seven potatoes here. We have a family of five, but we like to have leftovers because my husband likes to take some leftover for lunch. And they're about medium-sized potatoes. This one's kind of small, but that's okay. Alrighty, so the bacon is actually starting to brown. Looking pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start draining some of this fat. You know, when I was little, my mom always saved her bacon grease and anytime she made fried potatoes, she always used her bacon grease for her fried potatoes. I don't do Back that. to the potatoes. Now they're all chopped and ready to go onto the stove. Okay, so you're going to want to put the lid on, turn the heat on high, and 
and let it come to a boil. I like draining my bacon this way. Uh, it wastes less paper towels and to and make sure you get rid of all the grease that's sitting on top of your bacon. So I let it sit in this and I shake it out a little and let all the grease, see how it's letting the grease out? Yeah. So you just let it sit there, shake it a little bit, and the grease will fall down in there and you have bacon pieces. And I might not have let it, like I don't like my bacon burn, so I didn't cook it fully through I guess you could say to the point where it looks dark but as it sits it gets crispier so Okay, so I drained my potatoes. They're getting ready to be mashed and I pulled my meatloaf out of the, the broiler and I actually did like I would the brownies and I pulled the thing down so it could rest. You could cover it if you want to, but it's not gonna be sitting there that long. Oh, might as well do this now. So the bacon, I'm just gonna put on top. And kids always go first. We got Spider Man and Minnie Mouse patiently awaiting for their meatloaf. And I'm gonna start them off with a half a slice each. No, well, maybe they'll eat a whole slice. See the carrots in there, and the crackers, and the little bits of sausage. Drum roll, please. I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's Minnie Mouse. There's Spider Man. Yes. Get off her bacon, Holmes. Uh -huh. And okay, you guys have to eat it without forks. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So is everybody happy? Yeah. Give a big thumbs up. Oh. Give give everyone a big thumbs up and tell them to subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe, like, and turn on all post notifications. Jeez. Uh -huh. He knows his stuff, huh? Oh, Alright, guys. We didn't even get to see Okay, say it. I can't. Say please subscribe. Please subscribe. And share and like. And share and yes. Yeah. And all that good stuff. And all that good stuff. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for hanging out with us. Bye.